oh yeah, ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. Then later there's running and um, screaming. Well, <laughs> there seems to be a lot of that in the new Apple TV Plus original series, Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. So who's ready for some kaiju craziness? Following the thunderous battle between Godzilla and the Titans that leveled San Francisco and the shocking revelation that monsters are real, two siblings follow in their father's footsteps to uncover their family's connection to the secretive organization known as Monarch. So I've seen the first eight of the ten episodes for season one, and if you're coming into this series expecting giant kaiju fights and massive amounts of city destruction, you're in for disappointment. Because this is about Monarch. I mean, we do get to see some kaijus, and I'm really impressed at not only the visuals, but also Genji's the variety of monsters that were shown. Now, the story, it's told from two perspectives. One from the past, as the monsters are newly discovered, and then in 2015, following the events of Godzilla's attack on San Francisco. This is a globe-hopping adventure as we watch characters try to track down monsters or people in both timelines. Now, the narrative does run the risk of becoming scattered because we bounce back and forth, but it does remain clear-cut and cohesive. Now, in a stroke of genius, the production secured both Kurt and Wyatt Russell to play the older and younger versions of a same character. Lee Shaw is their character, and he's a military guy who ends up working with a scientist and a former service member in the past as they try to locate anomalies which are then discovered to be the kaiju. Then in the 2015 timeline, he's more of a recluse, not totally of his own choosing, but he's still up for adventure and joins a trio of young people as they're on a search for somebody. And along their journey, they also encounter some kaiju. Now, this is a weekly release, which can be annoying at times, but these episodes are about 45-ish minutes. So they have a decent amount of content that they introduce that carries the story along. And while there is action, the central narrative is way more about the people involved than the monsters wreaking havoc on cities. The drama that's created between characters, it gets emotional at times, and even a bit feisty as we watch emotions flare with passionate opinions and actions. And something that also helps to make the series a little more exciting when looking at the episodic release schedule is that many of the episodes end on some very harried cliffhangers. There are jaw-dropping moments that either reveal something or involve a character, and right as it occurs, the screen goes black to the credits. I mean, <laughs> it is a bit rude, but it also is fun because it reminded me a lot of what it was like to watch a show like Lost when it was first airing. I mean, I was so engrossed in the story and riding high on the tension only to gasp and then get pseudo angry when it went to credits without resolving the scene. I mean, this certainly is going to whet the appetite to return to the show week after week. Now, I also appreciate that throughout the show, the characters get more and more development. We don't get huge exposition dumps to build out the players, but instead we learn about them as necessary, delivering insight through character moments, stressful situations, and flashbacks. Now, the downside to this is that it takes a lot longer to become fully invested in the characters. So through some intense scenes, especially when they're in danger, we aren't always as concerned as we could be about their outcome. Now, I did grow to care for some of them, as well as being engaged within their relationships, but it did take time. And because this series is more focused on the people searching for the monsters rather than the monsters themselves, the lack of instant connection can work against investment. And the upside of not knowing everything about each of the characters is that there is a small air of mystery to certain relationships, building intrigue, even if it is mild. Now, to the show's credit, the special effects, they're a lot of fun, showcasing several different monsters that haven't been featured in any of the modern movies. The texturing and the shading make them look real and part of the world, and then they are fiercely creative in their design, some featuring just a crap ton of teeth or maybe snarling tentacles that emit just all kinds of danger. And to add to the excitement, when the kaiju do make their appearances, peril for all those around is imminent, creating nail-biting situations that made me wish for more of their screen time, as well as some massive monster battles. Now, after viewing the first 8 out of 10 episodes, I do think the show runs the risk of dragging certain elements out just to create a longer timeline. But because the graphics are wonderfully executed and the danger and excitement levels are high and stressful, the show is worthy of a watch. Now, the lack of kaiju screen time may be a deterrent, but when they appear, they're awesome. Interconnected stories combined with globe-hopping adventures that work to instill drama and mystery. And thanks to some stressful cliffhangers, this series should keep audiences coming back week after week. I don't know if this is going to stick the landing or if it will just be open-ended to continue for another season, but so far, despite a sometimes scattered story and lack of character connection, this is one that you should buckle down for. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and a bunch of violence. 
Now, because I haven't seen the final episodes, I'm not going to give this a score, but I do think it's fun and worth giving a shot. So what monsters do you hope are going to show up in this series? Let me know in the comments below. Also, Godzilla Minus One is coming out soon, and I've already bought my tickets to see it. Are you going to be seeing it? If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.